and welcome to this special edition of Women's World, where we feature the PNG Women's Forum. Now, today is day one, and the theme is leadership and mentorship. Take a look while we show you highlights. The forum was opened by key speakers, Minister for Religion, Youth and Community, Delano Gore, the Executive Director, External Affairs for ExxonMobil PNG, Ambassador Robert Icey, Linda Babao O'Neill, an advocate for women's issues and wife of Prime Minister PNG, and U.S. Ambassador Catherine Ebert Gray. I want to assure you that during the next three years of my ambassadorship, I will be speaking out in support of this cultural shift and to address our defined goals of change, including an urgent need to address the unacceptable and immediate crisis the prevalent widespread gender-based violence against women and girls that permeates the society. As long as the hard-working women and girls of this country suffer common violence, face insurmountable odds to run for office, are kept from schools and vital health services, and are unable to access credit and skills to earn a true living, we must continue to find our voice and wisely exercise our rights. Clearly, these are complex and deeply rooted challenges. Challenges we might understand, but we do not have to accept. As Prime Minister O'Neill has stated, eliminating violence against women and children is the responsibility of all communities. The day started with an informative panel discussion on the development of women leaders, asking real questions. Why do we need women leaders? What measures should be taken to develop women leaders? And what concrete steps are being taken in PNG to provide development opportunities for women? Experienced panelists included Teresa Jiangtong, President of the National Council of Women, Ariane Kasman, Yaka Coordinator, Transparency International PNG, Joshua Kiruhia, Project Officer for Equal Playing Field, Kepas Pown, Women's Advocate and former Director of the Law and Justice Sector Secretariat, and Dame Carol Kidu, former Minister for Community Development. I think what's come to my mind, mind most that we've got to have, what comes out of this is we must leave this, this forum knowing that one size will not fit all in Papua New Guinea. So any interventions and activities we plan, do not plan them comprehensively for the whole country. We've heard about matrilineal societies. We know that Ariane is from a patrilineal society. I married into a patrilineal society. We know that nowadays we've got a transitional society where extended is still very important clan, but also some people are going towards nuclear. We have a very, very vibrant uh, society and in all of this, I would like us to go back, I'm not really talking about what I, I would like us to go back and do an analysis. Because you've heard from Minister Gore that there is enormous amount being done. And she's forging forward with this work on women. But I think it's time we go back and we really analyze what was women's influence traditionally. Women weren't downtrodden traditionally. Their influence was invisible. And our job now is to bring that, that influence to be visible. They were like the backbone of the society. Like when I was a young girl in Australia, women were kind of invisible. And children were told to be seen but not heard. You know, we're society. So I think we need to go back and accept the fact that women had certain roles in society the Department for Community Development presented the second and empowering discussion with a special panel emphasizing women in Parliament. The Secretary for the Department for Religion, Youth and Community Development, Anna Solomon, moderated the panel which consisted of two of the three current female leaders in the National Parliament, Minister for Religion, Youth and Community, Delala Gore, and Governor for the Eastern Highlands Province, Julie Soso. I would like to acknowledge all the former women leaders, women in politics and women in business, uh, Papua Haine, all the women in the churches, the different churches that, uh, that uh, supported women's uh, programs and women's activities all the way to bring us at last 
in this term, three women in parliament. The third session to be delivered at the forum was a special set of keynote speakers. Papua New Guinea's very own Dr. Cecilia Nembo, President and Vice-Chancellor of Divine Word University. Dr. Cecilia's milestone was set in history recently by becoming the first Vice-Chancellor of a university in Papua New Guinea. The other valuable and unforgettable keynote speakers at the forum were Michelle Lucero, Chief Administrative Officer and General Counsel of the Children's Hospital in Colorado, USA, and Saran Kaba Jones, CEO and founder of Face Africa. The next panel discussion addressed role models in positions of influence. Sharing information collectively were the U.S. Ambassador Ebert Gray, Dr. Cecilia Nembo, Emma YY, Michelle Lucero, Saran Kaba Jones, and Mary Ellingson. Mary Ellingson shared her view that when anyone is in any position of responsibility, they should do it well and do it with integrity. I say to myself, you know, when you're doing something, and I think Cecilia mentioned this uh, very succinctly, is that when you're in any position of responsibility, do it and do it well. Do it with integrity, do it with honesty. Um, and people will see this because you will reflect that in your in your attitude towards others and in what you do welcome back to women's world you're watching a special edition featuring the png women's forum now this is day two and the agenda is safety and security. Keep watching as we show you highlights. The second day of the forum was opened by Stephanie Copas Campbell, an executive director for the Oil Search Foundation, and GT Buston, president of the PNG Tribal Foundation. You cannot run away from your problem. A problem is a problem until you get to the root of the problem. So when we're talking about violence in PNG and violence, gender-based violence, violence against women and children, Misa Ting Ting, what am I straight to display heavy you me got Papua New Guinea? What am I straight to display something? How do we address the root of the problem in our country? Following the day's theme of safety and security, the first topic of panel discussion was eliminating gender-based violence. Among the panel were leading representatives from Family PNG, the Family and Sexual Violence Unit, United Nations Population Fund, among others. Honest discussions cover the type of efforts effective in eliminating gender-based violence, what lessons have been learned, and an important question which can be asked to everyone. What can you do to eliminate gender-based violence in your community? The presentation for the Women of Courage Award was also presented by the U.S. Ambassador Ebert Gray to award winner Winnie William. Winnie William is from Southern Highlands Province and manages almost 20 health clinics, aid posts and voluntary care council centres which provide primary health care and HIV AIDS services in the unserved remote areas in Southern Highlands and Hela Province. She also helps taking in women and men who are tortured after being accused of being sorcerers. Winnie says that she could have never have imagined receiving such award for her goodwill. Most of the women who seek um, shelter from us are homeless, uh, widows, I could say, and uh, they come from polygamous family. And the torture that they experience is more inhuman, I could say, because uh, they're tortured in a way that uh, you could not imagine a man doing that because I guess he, he, he comes from a mother. She said that she witnessed people who come in with horrific wounds, not only on their body, but also their genitals. She said that at times people would chase them and even stone her clinic. Her only hope for the future is that people will come to their senses and accusations and tortures would stop. The horror of seeing the women suffer, especially the physical injuries they had on their bodies. And I could say the genitals really made me feel that someone has to stand up. Those who are really suffering because mostly it is in the rural areas, I would be happy to see justice 
is prevailed for them. Ambassador Herbert Grace said that since 2007, the U.S. Embassy had given out International Women of Courage Award and this year's nominee was well deserving of the award. She said Winnie steadfastly placed her own life in danger to save other women from horrific sorcery-related violence. And I'm so proud to have this day with her and to honor her. Winnie has done so much for her community and for the women of this country and has shown true courage at personal risk. She also brings expertise, which is recognized by all of us as so essential for this community and to make a difference. Miss Winnie William is a medical professional and serves as a Catholic Health Secretary for the Diocese of Mendy. She received her degree in general nursing at the School of Nursing in East New Britain province. She later went on to complete her master's degree. She is a wife and a mother of three children. The pressing and important topic of eliminating sorcery-related violence was also discussed through an equally important panel comprised of Anton Lutz from the Lutheran Mission in Enger province, Ruth Kissam, Director for Partners for Change, and Lily Bessur, founder of Voice for Change. Lily was also a panelist at the 56th session of the Commission on the Status of Women at United Nations headquarters in New York, 2012. Women's rights continue to evolve in Papua New Guinea and with that said, the next panel discussion for the forum was Legal Environment in PNG, Know Your Rights. Panelists like Nicodemus Mosoro, Deputy Secretary for Restorative Justice, Justice Administration, covered alongside the other panelists the legal landscape for women's rights, the steps required to obtain justice, and legal avenues available in PNG. To be honest, thank you for the accommodations, but we didn't want to come that far. Laws are one thing, but uh, conduct and behavioral aspects are another aspect altogether that make laws effectively apply in our country. We can have uh, well-drafted laws, well-researched laws, make reference to a good precedent, elsewhere but the implementation aspect of it is is another ball game altogether and the government admits to that fact the government is competent and capable of having good laws but then it requires all of us in this room to make legislation work for us it all boils down to attitude mindset change all those kind of things together those are all part of the whole equation of a good uh, legal system in, in, in a governance system uh, or in particular a democratic society. Apart from the main panel discussions taking place, various workshops were also run. The social entrepreneurship workshop was run by Saran Kaba Jones as a mentor. Jones pointed out five factors that are required to start up any social entrepreneurship. These factors are resourcefulness, passion, courage, commitment and willingness to take risks. As the day was closing in, a signing ceremony took place between the Living Light Foursquare Gospel Church and the Port Moresby Japanese Embassy. This event was significant as it was witnessed by the U.S. Embassy, showing that the United States of America and Japan go hand in hand in a collective effort for Papua New Guinea. The signing was for the funding of the Human Resource Development Center at Kaogere. Japan's uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, as you know, is insisting that we should seek for the society where women shine. So this is his own initiative, and the government of Japan is pursuing this uh, initiative in various ways. <clears throat> in this uh, uh, country, Papua New Guinea, we also uh, made an effort, uh, it's making efforts to uh, promote the gender equality and uh, uh, <coughs> elevating gender-based parents in all aspects of the society. With this regard, I am very happy that today we'll sign a grant contract up to uh, 68,000, which is approximately uh, 200 kina, 200,000 kina. Uh, with Living Light uh, Foursquare Gospel Church uh, to build a resource center for women in Kaugera in Port Moresby. <laughs> the church currently provides a shelter to survivors of uh, gender-based 
variants, and they are treated through technical support funded by USAID. This new resource center built by the grant will, be, uh, will enable the charge to provide enough space to rehabilitate the survivors through counseling and examination programs. The new resource center will also provide training space to help women acquire basic life skills such as sewing and cooking. I believe the new resource center will contribute to our common go goals. <coughs> gender issues and uh, gender-based violence in Papua New Guinea is one of the major challenges in development. I believe that this women's forum is an important platform to strengthen the strategic partnership towards achieving the gender equality, women's empowerment, and welfare in Papua New Guinea. So the new resource center will, uh, is currently under construction. Hopefully it will be completed uh, this month. And, um, and it will provide a, a, um, a ample, ample spaces for, for women. It will have conference room, it will have um, safe and secure counseling rooms for, for women who go to the, um, the NGO for, um, for counseling services. And most importantly, this project will not be possible if it wasn't for a joint partnership with the uh, U.S. Embassy. And also, we've had that New Zealand, New Zealand High Commission has also come on board. They've given funds to purchase some equipment for once the resource center is completed, they have uh, such as generator set and air conditions to fit in the building once it's completed. So we are happy, we are happy that we have this uh, trilateral cooperation between uh, three countries who are assisting um, organizations to carry out their projects effectively. Thank you for watching Women's World and today is day three of the PNG Women's Forum. The theme today is entrepreneurship and economic empowerment. Stay tuned as we show you highlights. The final day of this year's PNG Women's Forum was all about entrepreneurship and economic empowerment. One of the two opening speakers was Papua New Guinea's very own Jennifer Buying Wanko a director of Save PNG. With Cafe New Guinea, um, we travel to over 26 communities in Papua New Guinea, 14 districts, 19 different provinces around PNG. We slept and ate with people who want to, and we wanted to show the world the beauty and the richness of our culture. And we focused on food and food culture as our window into our blessed Melanesian culture. We wanted the world to see how special and unique this country is and how beautiful the people are and more importantly to educate the future generations on their dynamic, bountiful and diverse heritage. And the other power Mary Bronte Mules, the Deputy High Commissioner to the Australian High Commission in PNG. I'm pleased because promoting entrepreneurship and economic development is at the core of a lot of Australia's engagement here in Papua New Guinea and gender equality and women's empowerment is a fundamental element of everything we do here across the board. As this form has highlighted, gender equality is central to economic and human development, to supporting women's rights, and of course violence against women prevents women from achieving social and economic equality and advancement. The first panel discussion for the day covered government resources, where panellists included John Drame, Government Relations Manager for Telecom, Catherine Weber, UN Women for Change, Stephanie Stolmeister, Country Manager for the World Bank, Ellison Piddick, Assistant Governor for the Bank of PNG, Microfinance Expansion, and Des Yaninen, National Development Bank. The following informative and fresh panel discussion of the day for the forum touched on entrepreneurship, here, a wealth of knowledge was shared from IT and technology specialists 
to media, education, agriculture and health, to fashion, textile, culture and beauty. These panelists were Winifred Amini, Jennifer Bain Waiko, Charlene Gawi, Catherine E.P. Johnson, Priscilla Kevin, Zenia Penny, and Danielle Linus. The last panel discussion highlighted practical examples of how entrepreneurs in PG can gain a position in the supply chains and procurement processes for major corporations. The panel included Cesar Kini, the Community Development Manager for ExxonMobil PG, and Tony Westaway from Nationwide Bank. Tony shared examples of value chain finance. And even here in Papua New Guinea, there's a program that uh, we're working with in association with. Asian Development Bank and uh, Guinea Guado and, and others um, for women in fishing. And um, perhaps if I could just, I'll, I'll give a couple of examples to explain what we, you know, what are we talking about, value chain finance, and I'll try and keep it simple. Let, let's go back to those women in Gauri Village. The young boys go out in the banana boats and, and, and pick up the fish and bring it in. Uh, the women in the marketplace uh, fill the fish, prepare the fish, and they pass it on to um, one of the people in the village who's got a, a village PMV, may have some refrigeration equipment. He brings the fish in into to Port Moresby. It goes to a wholesaler and that wholesaler then um, delivers the fish to, to retail outlets and supermarkets. So you've got different people in the supply chain. And um, we've seen uh, the tool like the mobile wallet, for example, which I was talking about before used in that supply chain whereby, say, the, the women that are filled of the fish, um, they would be paid by the, the, the person driving the truck by, by mobile phone. They would do a P2P transfer, person to person transfer. So there's no actual cash changing hands. So um, that adds value in, in the supply chain, that mobile phone becomes, becomes a tool. So what the bank does is really helping to, to lubricate that chain, if, if you like. The final day was wrapped up with summaries from the forum's special guests, Michelle Lucero and Saren Kaba-Jones. They not only covered all three days, but invited all participants to share their pledges. Pledges that reaffirm the commitments each participant makes to each other and to their communities. If you don't mind sharing your pledges or ideas that you have on ways that you think you want to go back to your communities and give and give back. In their closing remarks, Secretary for Department for Religion, Youth and Community Development Anna Solomon, US Ambassador Ebert Gray, and Director of Operation for the PNG Tribal Foundation Michelle Hawafa ended the forum collectively as the co-hosts of the PNG Women's Forum 2016. The forum has been about you and the output will also be you. Your engagement, your discussions, your collaboration, your support of each other and most importantly your actions. We as the organisers have put this together but the input was you, and the way forward lies with you. And that's it tonight from us on Women's World. If you want to watch the episode again, you can on MTV Online, or search for us on Facebook. Search Women's World MTV. More coming up in the next episode. Stay tuned and enjoy the rest of your viewing on your number one to watch, MTV.